like so many. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. I want to start off by saying also too that I, today's service I know can be hard because some have lost their mothers. But you know what? I know that God is such an awesome God that he will get you through. And I want you to take time to just remember the great and the loving and the awesome memories of your mom today, if they're not here with you. We love you. And we're praying. We're praying that God will heal your heart, that God will take you through. And understand this, and this is a fact, that we will see our loved ones again. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that you are such an awesome God. And we glorify your holy name. For God, in the name of Jesus, we come today to lift up the name of Jesus, to glorify him. And God, I just pray, God, in the name of Jesus, as we go forth, that God, if you would, Lord God, touch us, sweep through this entire country, this entire world, God, and continue to have your way. For we trust and believe in you because you are our Lord and you are our creator and there's nothing that takes you by surprise and you have an answer for everything. So I praise you, I glorify you, I lift you up as we go into this time of worship. Have your way in the houses, in the, in the areas throughout this country for all mothers. We thank you, God, that you are our Lord and our Savior. And it's in Jesus' name we pray all things. Amen. And so I want you now to just join us as we go into a time of worship, a time of celebration. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Love you. Oh, my God.
praise God on this day. Today we are going to start the second part of how to live your best life. And in this part right here, part two, this part right here is a little, a little heavy. <laughs> and because we, we're going to talk about our physical health. We started last Sunday with our spiritual health. And this is a continuation from our spiritual health to our physical health. And there are some questions that I want to ask you. But let me say this, when we talk about our physical health, I'm not talking about diets, and I'm not talking about weight loss, I'm not talking about any of those things at this moment, but what I want to focus on is the motivation behind what we do and how we do it. So the first question I want to ask you is have you ever thought about your physical health and how it impacts your spiritual health? Have you ever thought about your physical health and how it impacts your spiritual health? Number two is, do you ever say that I need to do better with my physical health in the areas of rest, my eating habits, reducing my stress, and exercising? But here's the thing. Do you go back after thinking about that and resume the same habits? Number three, do you know that how we care for our bodies directly reflects our walk with Christ? How we care for our bodies directly reflects our walk with Christ. That's a hard one. Because I had to think about these things. And, I, and as I was going through all week, praying and looking and just looking at scriptures and, and thinking about this conversation today, I had to repent, man. I had to literally get on my face and ask God for forgiveness. Because I have failed in this area over time. But let me say there is an answer to it. And so we're going to explore that. Let's look at the fourth question. Did you know that we do not own these bodies? We don't own these bodies. But we are in charge of managing these bodies. We are in charge of managing these bodies. And so the last question is, are you ready to live your best life physically? Here's our focus. The lesson today is to help us focus on becoming motivated for getting healthy. Not just so that we can show off our bodies and get all these compliments, which is good. That's not a problem. That's not the issue. But we want to get ourselves healthy. But our physical health has eternal implications. The problem is that we as believers, and I'm just going to talk about myself here briefly, when we, when we are not physically healthy, it actually causes us a problem in carrying out those things that God has called us to carry out. You know why? Because we don't have enough energy or physical stamina to do those things. God wants us to be in physical health because the journey that we're going to go on in our Christian walk is going to be directly impacted if we're not physically and mentally prepared. This is why God says in his word that we must count the cost. We must count the cost because if we don't, 
We won't give God our very best. And here's the other thing. Our bodies is not only where we live. Now catch this. Your body is not only where we live, where you live, but it's also where God lives. And in fact, the Bible tells us that God lives in us and works through us. And so we have to be physically, no, let's back up. We have to be spiritually and physically healthy. So physical health, catch this, is a spiritual discipline. Physical health is a spiritual discipline. And so I want you to strap up and let's go on this journey together today. We're going to cover six habits and we're going to explore this whole thing around physical health. Trust me, I learned so much. But I also wish, if I could just show you, I wish I had a, a, a first aid kit because trust me, I was getting cut everywhere. But that's not our intention to make anybody look bad. Our intention is to improve so that we can be the best version of ourselves for the glory of God. Amen? So let's start off with 3 John, the first chapter. And in verse 2 it says this, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. In other words, the Bible is saying that I want you to be as physically healthy as you are spiritually. We know that to get healthy, we have to do a number of things. You ready? Write these down. The first thing is that we have to eat right and eat less. Eat right and eat less. The second thing is that we should do some form of exercise daily. The third is that, this is important, we must get the proper rest. That's important that we get proper rest. I know during this time of uh, quarantine and we're inside, that some days, and I don't know about you, but I know about me, some days I forget what day it is because things are just running together. But we have to give proper rest. You know, we want to binge watch Netflix or our favorite shows until the wee hours of night and then we go to bed. But we can't do that because we're not getting proper rest. The next one is a big one. We have to learn how to reduce our stress levels. In fact, the Bible tells us that we are to cast all our cares upon him for he cares for us. And so we need to give those areas in our lives that cause us stress. We need to turn those things over to the Lord. And the last one is that we need to operate with a kingdom mindset. See, getting physically healthy, getting spiritually healthy, is all based on our thinking, our mind. And so we have to have this mindset that is kingdom driven. Amen? Amen. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. The sixth chapter of 1 Corinthians, starting at verse 12. And I'm reading from the NIV version. And it says this I have the right to do anything, you say. But not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything. But I will not be mastered by anything. Let's look at that. Life is just too short to waste on things that are unnecessary. Would you agree? Your life is too valuable, too important to waste it on things that are totally unnecessary, even though you have the freedom to do so. Yes, you have the freedom to do so. The Bible says, look, I have the right to do anything. That's us talking. I have the right to do anything. But everything is not beneficial. And so we need to look at that. But then the part in here says that I will not be mastered by anything. Understand that those things we allow 
to master or dominate our lives, catch this, is what and who you and I worship. You catch that? Those things in life that we allow to dominate and control our thinking, control us, is who and what we worship. Chew on that for a second. In verse 13 it says this, you say food is for the stomach, and the stomach is for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. See, the Corinthians felt the same way about this in other areas of their life. They felt that they could have an appetite for sexual cravings that led them to start visiting the pagan temple prostitutes. Understand that our bodies are not our own. So, do, so we can't do with it what we want to do with it. But our bodies are for the Lord in every area of our lives. See, I don't own this body, and I'm charged to manage, to steward this body of mine. I can't do what it is that I want to do at all. You think about it. I can't use this body to be sexually impure. I can't use this body to do things that will not glorify its creator. And in 1 Corinthians, in the 14th verse, it says this, and I'll read this through verse 20. It says, by his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. And verse 15 says, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it said, the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. In verse 18 it says this, Flee, run, jet up, get out of God from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Wow. Honor God with your bodies. We're going to cover six truths. Six habits, six truths, I must call it truths. We're going to cover six of them. And in each one of them, we will explore what God says about these bodies that he's put us in charge to manage. Truth number one, and I want you to catch this and write this down. Truth number one. My body is God's property. You get that? My body, your body, is God's property. In Psalms 139, 13 through 14, it says this, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Did you know that we don't own anything in life? We don't own these bodies. We don't own our time. We don't own our talents. We don't own our money. But God loaned us our bodies for his purpose. Everything he created has a purpose. There's nothing that God has created on this earth, in this world, 
that does not have a specific purpose to glorify his name. God will hold us accountable. Did you know that? God will hold you and me accountable for how we manage those things that he has given us to have management over. One is our bodies. So the question is this, is that how are you how are you caring for the things God has given you to manage? You catch that question? How are you caring for the things that God has called you to manage? That's truth number one. Truth number two is this. God expects me to manage my body. God expects me, he expects you to manage your body. In 1 Corinthians 6, 12, we read that I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You and I are not the owners of these bodies, but we are the stewards, the managers, and we are expected to manage them the way the owner, who is God, expects us to do it because we will be held accountable. Isn't that something? I'm going to be held accountable for how I manage or even mismanage the things that God has given me to do. And I think the biggest point that you have to understand is you don't own anything. We said that earlier, you don't own anything. God owns it because he paid it all. Paul also says, in this message, in this passage, brother, that he will not be mastered by anything. In other words, I am responsible for my body and I will not allow food, sex, drinking, drugs, or anything that will contaminate my body. I'm not going to allow it to take rule over me. I'm not going to allow it to master me. Wow. That is something else. I will not allow anything to master me. You and I will have to stand before God and give an account. When God says, what did you do with the talents I gave you? What did you do with the money I gave you? What did you do with the opportunities and the time that I gave you? What did you do with the body that I gave you? We have to think about that. But don't think too long because we have to have an answer to the Lord. Truth number two, God expects me to manage my body. Let's look at truth number three. My body, here it is, my body, and this is very important because there's a lot of misconceptions about this, but my body will be resurrected after I die. This body, this broken down vessel that I have allowed to get here will be resurrected when I die. We are going to get a new version of our bodies when we get to heaven. In other words, a resurrected body. Some people believe that we'll just go up, we'll die, and we know that our spirit goes up to be with the Lord. But also, did you know that your bodies will also be raised? You will not have some broken down body walking around. You won't have some wings that you're fluttering around in heaven. You won't look like the red bull, you know, uh, person with little bitty wings flying around. That's not who you're going to look like. But you're going to have a new version of you. A perfect version. Jesus was raised physically. You catch that? Jesus was raised physically, and therefore, we will also be raised physically. In 1 Corinthians 6 and 14, it says this, By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Wow. He's going to raise you and me also. He's already raised God. God is, Jesus is sitting on the right-hand side of the Lord, interceding on our behalf. We have to care for these bodies, care for those times, times that we're allowed, that we allow, those opportunities that we have, 
the money that we have. We have to care for the things that God has given us to manage. Your body is just that important to God. You're just that important to God. You, your body, and how you care for it is really important to God. In fact, understand this, that God, the God that created you, is also going to recreate you. You know, so you're not going to have this limp. You're not going to have this, this body that's broken down. No. You're going to have a new and improved version of your body. Just like God says, he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. We will have a new body. I was sharing with my mom this morning as I was speaking to her about the fact that, you know what? I asked her, how long had grandma, grandma been uh, been dead. How long had she passed away? A long time ago. And she said, back in 1975, your grandmother passed away. She was 50 years old. So I'm just thinking on that day, and I begin to tell my mom, do you understand, mom, that when we die, I'm going to see you again. And I'm going to see grandma. But I'm going to see you, and you're going to see me, and grandma, we're going to see those we love. We're going to have these new perfect bodies. And we will be able to see each other. I look forward to that, but I'm okay with giving me some more time. I'm okay with that. Are you? Here's truth number four. Write this down. My body is connected to the body of Christ. My body is connected to the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 6 and the 15 verse, it says this, says, do you know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Our bodies are members of Christ. In fact, here's a fact for you. Jesus gave his body for you and for me, and he wants us to honor him with our bodies. Jesus gave up his body for me and you, and he wants us to honor him with these bodies that we live in now. We as believers should care about our body because how we treat our body is a reflection of the body of Christ. It is not about vanity. It's not about, I mean, yeah, we want to look good. We want to have this, you know, the, the six packs and we want to look good and we want to have the big bicep. But you know what? We really should want to just be physically healthy. And there's nothing wrong if you have a physical body that has all the ribs and the muscles and all that kind of stuff. It's nothing wrong with that. But understand this, that we, our bodies are simply used to honor God. And our body should be something that we manage well because God has allowed us to have these bodies. That's truth number four. Truth number five. The Holy Spirit lives in these bodies. The Holy Spirit lives in your and my, yours and mine. He lives in our bodies. The Holy Spirit does. In Corinthians, the sixth chapter, again, starting in verse 19, it says this. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you whom you have received from God. God put his spirit in our body. He takes up residence inside of me and inside of you. God is living in our bodies. That should all cause you to pause and think about this for a second. Because I thought about this. So, if he takes residence in my body, if that's the case, then how I treat my body, I also treat God. In 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, it says this, Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? God's temple is sacred and you are that temple. You are that temple. Wow. Wow. You are that temple. I'm that temple. God resides in us. 
He lives in our bodies. God has always, you hear me? God has always had a dwelling place. In fact, I'll give you some proof. First, God dwelt in the tabernacle, the place that was designed through the special specification that was given to Moses. So God could dwell here on earth. In the second place, God then gave instructions to David for building the temple different from the tabernacle in Jerusalem. A temple of stone and God dwelt in that place. Now catch this. Today, where does God dwell, you think? Today. If you say he dwells in you and he dwells in me, you are absolutely correct. Today, this is the temple that God is choosing to live in. And so we have to care and make these bodies sacred. And they have to be used for the glory, for glorifying the Lord himself. I don't know about you, but, and I can't speak for you, but in so many ways over the years, I have failed. And I'm only speaking about me. I'm only confessing my wrongs. I have failed to really hold this body that God has given me to manage. I have not done such a great job because I wanted what I wanted. And I did what I wanted. Some things, most things were totally unnecessary. And some things that I've done through the years have been totally forbidden. I can only talk about me. I can't talk about anybody else. And so I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit takes residence up in your body. And so we have to treat our bodies sacred. And we have to use our bodies to glorify God. Therefore, we should be good managers, sound stewards of that. Think about this question here. Let's say you were coming down the street. Think about this. Let's say you were coming down the street and you were approaching a place where you worship. Now, in this case, let's say you were coming down the street and you were approaching Christian love, here, right? And you seen someone vandalizing this building, vandalizing this place of worship. They were breaking windows, they were throwing rocks and stuff, they were spray painting and graffiti and everything. They were totally destroying the house where we worship. Now, here's the question, what would you do? More than likely, you probably would call the police or in my case, you know, I'm a rider, I'm, you know, I'm ready to just, you know, take things in my own hands and that's not always smart, but you know what, I would be totally upset totally beside myself to see someone destroying the place where I worship. Now, I want you to think about this. What about when God sees how we vandalize this temple, this body, by not allowing ourselves to get the rest we need, by having so much stress by not exercising, not conditioning this body, by putting in things in this body that's going to cause me or cause you to be physically unhealthy. Do you know that we're doing the same thing that those people who were doing that in the example, destroying the house, destroying and vandalizing? We are vandalizing our bodies. So we had to think about that. I had to think deeply and long about that. Because you know what? I felt bad. And at that moment, I just began to repent because I have not taken care of this physical body. And it has direct impact on how I do things from a spiritual side as well. This role as a senior pastor is not easy. And I know that uh, Pastor Barbara, Apostle Bill, who was alive, I know that this role is not easy. And anybody who thinks that a senior pastor's role, a person that's in charge over the sheep and the people, if they think that role is easy, man, you are sadly mistaken. We have to keep 
our bodies up. We have to begin to do better. I have to begin to do better to be a better leader of this house. That's what I start to think about. Again, I'm talking about me. And so I'm saying to you to lead your families and to do the things that God has called you to do and called me to do, we have to be sound in our physical health just as well as being sound in our spiritual health. We got to strap on a kingdom mindset. So think about this and ask yourself this question. Are you ready to live your best life physically? Now, let's look at the last and final habit, truth level. Let's look at this last and final truth, the sixth truth. Jesus, think about this, Jesus bought my body on the cross. Jesus paid for it on the cross. He paid for it. He paid for yours and my body, for our lives on the cross. I want you to think about it. I'm going to pause for about five or ten seconds. And I want you to close your eyes for a second, I want you to think about this. That Jesus bought my body, he bought your body on the cross. That's powerful, isn't it? That's a powerful call. In Corinthians 6, rounding up the 19th and the 20th verse, it says this, you are not your own. Wow, we'll start there, you are not your own. So we can't do what we really want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it, because you're mismanaging something that was not, is that, that you did not create. So we cannot just do what we want to do. You were bought at a price. That price was the blood and the body of Christ. He gave his life for you and me. Therefore, honor God with your body. Honor him with your body. Remember Jesus, remember Jesus paid for your real estate. He paid for your real estate. He paid for my real estate. And we are to manage it until that day. In Romans 12 1, it says this, I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Worship is also giving our body to God, as well as taking good care of it. When we take care of our bodies, when we begin to really care for our physical bodies, that is a form of worship. This was a very difficult lesson. And it's difficult because I did not do the things that I should do. But I'm not going to dwell on that. You know why? Because I still have time to do better. You still have time to do better. I'm not, again, asking you to get this super fit. I'm not saying that because even people who are smaller, I, I, I'm not going to tell you, I'm, I'm a big fella, right? And let me say this. There ain't no such thing as being big bone, right? No. I'm a big dude because I like to eat, right? And I did not do a lot of things with my body the way I should. But guess what? I know people who are smaller than me who are unhealthy. So let me just say, you can look at the physical evidence that, man, that guy, he's not taking care of his body that well. But I can also look at people, and you can tell when people are not doing well with their bodies. And they can be smaller than me. But here's the thing, though. It's not for us to judge and look at someone else's body, but we need to focus on the big law that's jumping out of our own eye and not worry about the law that's in someone else's. 
So we have to take time and not look at everybody else, but we have to take time and look at ourselves. Look at the reflection of ourselves in the mirror. This is not an opportunity for us to go say, well, that, that lady or that guy or whoever, man, they don't take care of themselves. No. As a believer, when you see somebody that may need some assistance, you give it. You give it. You give it. You serve. You love. But make sure that you're looking intently in your own mirror. Make sure you're doing a physical body wellness check of yourself. Amen? In John 5 and 6, it says this. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? That is the question, people. Do you want to get well? That's the question that I have to look at in my own mirror. Harold, do you want to get well? See, that guy at the pool of Bethesda was there for 38 years. And you would think Jesus comes out and he asks this question to this guy. He knew he was there all this time. But the question is, do you want to get well? Now, of course we can say, yeah, I want to get well. Yes, this guy wanted to do better. He wanted to be better. Then why did he sit there at the pool for 38 years? Why did he do that? Why at 53 years old, soon to be preferably 54 years old, July 28th, why did I just want to be well? Why did I stay in that place for so long? Why did this man at the pool stay there for so long? Jesus knew he had to ask this question. Do you want to get well? Therefore, do you want to get up and change the outcome, change the look, change how you feel, change how you think. Do you want to get well or do you want to go back to the same old habits? That's the question that I have to ask myself. That's the question that you have to ask. Do you want to get well? And if you want to get well, then here's something simple. Jesus told this man something so simple, yet so profound. He said, get up and take your mat and walk. Get up and change the outcome of your life. Get up and change the way you think. Get up. That is what we are charged to do, is to get up. We can't stay in that place. Yes, okay, so we learned the six truths. We learned that we have mismanaged in some ways our bodies. We learn these things, right? But here's the question. What are you going to do about it? And Jesus is asking, and he's standing and he's saying, do you want to get well? Do you want to get out of that condition? Then if you said yes, then get up. Get up and do something about it. That's what we are to do. Well, I know some people have physical challenges, and it's hard for them to physically get around. But even in your bed, even in those chairs, even in those places, you have to begin to do something. And when you begin the process of doing something, I believe this with all my heart, that God will come alongside you and carry you to the places that you can't do. And he will change the way you think. He will change your outcome. Because if he wasn't willing to do that, why would he give his life? Why would he pay the price for us? Jesus wants us, you and me, to get well. So we went through the six truths. And I'm going to go back and recap real quick each one of those truths so that you can understand those truths. And all I'm going to do is list them out. The first truth is my God, my body is God's property. That's the first truth. My body is God's property. The second truth is God expects me to manage my body. And the third truth is this, is that my body will be resurrected after I die. The fourth truth is 
My body is connected to the body of Christ. And the fifth truth is the Holy Spirit lives in my body. And here's the last truth. The sixth truth is this, is that my body, Jesus bought my body on the cross. Those are the six truths that I want you to learn as I'm learning today. Those are the six truths. And here's your assignment. We need, this, we need to have an assignment. I hope you did the spiritual assignment, the spiritual health assignment that we talked about last week. But here's the assignment for this week. And from now on, I want you, because I'm going to say it, I want you to get with a partner. Maybe one or maybe a small group of you. Get together. And I want you in your own self, in your own mind, I want you to write it down. Because something that is powerful about writing something down. I want you to write down and share with your partner or your small group members one or two things that you will do to become better physically healthy. Your one thing could be this. I want to go to bed at a decent hour and get some rest. That's a big one. It could be that I want to do something physically that will allow me to exercise a little bit daily. It could be one of those things. It could be that I need help exterminating the ants in my life. You know, the automatic negative thinking. Help me to change the way I think. That could be, I want to, I want to share with people, hey, you know what? I'm going to talk to Greg Bradshaw and tell Greg, you know what, man? I was thinking something that I shouldn't have been thinking and it's been bothering me. And I'm not going to just be that general. I'm going to give him specifics about what I'm thinking. What I was thinking, and I want, and I, then I'm going to listen to the advice that he gives me. I want to be able to speak those things out. See, the enemy wants us to be quiet. He wants us to keep doing what we've been doing. He wants us to move and stray away from the path. Because when we stray away from the path, we become most vulnerable for him to pounce on. Yes, the Bible says this: to cast all our cares on Him, for He cares for us. But then there's a line, there's a verse after that that says that we are to be self-controlled and alert, because the enemy roars around like a like a prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. He's always looking. He's always strategizing. He's always doing these things to try to cause us to leave. Our come, leave that place of security. That security is in the arms of the Lord and his people. He wants us to do that because it's easier for him to jump on me or jump on you when we're away from everyone else. When we become isolated, that's what the enemy wants to do. But when I stay in the fold, when I don't break the head, then I'm able to stay connected with those around me. And I'm able to be, I'm able to, to look at the things I need to do. I'm able to get the support. I'm able to get the love that I need and the accountability that I need to do better and be better for the glory of the kingdom of God. Did you catch that assignment? I want you again to find a partner or partner a small group of you. Make it fun, but have a weekly or a bi-weekly or a daily, however you want to do it, accountability time. Get on Zoom, get on a phone call, whatever it is you have to do to communicate with your group, your team of people, and hold each other accountable. Ask the hard questions. Did you do what you said you were going to do? If they say no, I want you to have enough boldness, enough love to say, why not? And when are you going to do it? And then you follow up with them. See, get in each other's business. That's what we have to do. Amen? Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord God, that you allowed us to assemble, Lord God, virtually, Lord. And I pray in the name of Jesus 
that as we, Lord God, become better at managing these bodies, I pray, God, that you would strengthen us, that you would give us insight, give us wisdom. Help us, Lord God, to move forward in such a way that we give you glory and we worship you, not only in our spiritual health, but also in our physical health. That we glorify your holy name. That we don't take for granted what you've given us, and that's these bodies. And that we will honor you, God, by honoring how we care for this temple. And so, Father, I pray now for each and every person that is out there, that's tuned in, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will cause them to be able to look intently at themselves and they will be able to really do a truthful diagnosis of what they look like and how they need to do better. Just, Lord God, touch us. Help us be truthful to ourselves, that we may be truthful to you, and that we may be truthful to others, so that we can heal, and so that we can become better for the glory of the kingdom of God. And so God, thank you. And I pray for those who are out there, Father, who have physical ailments, who have Lord God, the, not the ability to be able to move or to do things, Lord God, as they once were able. God, you touch their bodies, touch their minds, care for them. Cause us, Lord God, as the body of believers, not just in 1601 Stanford in Ypsilanti, Michigan, a place called Christian Love Fellowship Ministries International, but help our minds to expand globally, to expand, Lord God, beyond the walls of where we worship, and help us to become the body of Christ in this nation, in this world, that, Lord God, that you will cause us to be able to look beyond this, our circle, but help us, Lord God, to begin to pray for others elsewhere. So, God, we thank you. And we praise you, and we give you honor, and we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Now, let me say this. If you have not made a decision to give your life to the Lord, today is a great day. It's a great day. It's always a great day, but today is a great day to not put off something as important as this for tomorrow is simply admitting that you said it, believing that Jesus died for you and rose again, and confessing aloud that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. Did you catch that? You can take care of this in seconds. And if you want to do this, I want you to raise your hand and I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to repeat after me. Father, forgive me for my sins. Father, forgive me for my sins. Father, I believe that you, Jesus, died for me, and that you, Jesus, rose again and defeated death, hell, and the grave for me. And I confess Lord, that you are Lord of my life. You are the head of my life. You are Lord. And God, I believe that right now I am saved. I am a new creation. Did you pray that prayer? Then I would ask you to step out and be even more bold. I want you to get into the, the, the message boxes and on, on Facebook Live, and I want you to go to the text thread and say, you know what, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I want you all who are on this, and when you read this, I want you to celebrate like crazy. Because the angels in heaven are giving God glory because that one or that two 
for three or hundred souls have given themselves to Christ. So I want us to celebrate that. And on the second half, I want you to think about this, those who are out there. If you have strayed away from your walk with Christ, I want you to come in and I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for straying away from the truth. But God, I'm ready to come home. Father, receive me back into your home. I love you, Jesus, and I trust you, Christ, that you love me, that you welcome me back in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for welcoming me back in your home. Amen. I want you also to get on that, that, that thread, and I want you to begin to put in that I have recommitted my life to Jesus. And I want you all on there, even the ones that just got saved, I want you all to go in hard and, and praise God for someone who was once blind now can see. That's what this is all about. It's all about bringing people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and accepting them as their own personal savior. That's the only way we can become spiritually healthy and physically healthy, is that we do that. So I, I want to just thank you for tuning in. And I want to talk to you about giving. In fact, I think I can go online there and that I can actually help you know how to do this. So I'm going to have the camera guy go up, Greg, and, and he's going to open up. I'm going to open up this camera, this, this device, and I believe I was already up there. So I'm going to have us go to the giving button. So if you scroll across, hit on giving. And then you kind of go down a little bit, you'll see two newest ways that we have to give through Cash App and Venmo. And so I want you to open it up. We can open it up a little bit, but if you go on that side, you will see how to give via Venmo. You'll see how to give via Cash App. And then as you scroll down to more, those who want to use Tithing. Those are our three ways to give. And then we have a fourth way that's not listed up here. But you can mail your tithes and your offering into Christian Love Fellowship Ministries International at 1601 Stamford. And that's spelled S T A M as in Mary, F O R D Road, in Ypsilanti, Michigan, 48198. Those are the four ways that you can give. And so I want you to take time. And I want you to understand that your giving is so important. And we thank you for giving. I thank all of you out there, even those who don't go to Christian love, those who once were a part of this body, and guess what, you're still a part of this body. You're just in a different area of the state or of this country. And I want to thank you, because your gifts have poured in, your gifts have been such a blessing, and we've been able to continue ministry. And there's some things coming up that I'm going to announce to you probably next Sunday when we come for our part three of how to live our best life. And we're going to make some announcements around some new things coming up around Christian love. Again, thank you for what you do. Thank you for being the best part. And I'm going to finish this with some announcements. I want us to keep the entire Crawford family in prayer due to the passing of a phenomenal, I'm talking about an awesome, high strong, high energy woman of God who was a mother to hundreds and I would even say thousands of people who are connected with her. The passing of Mother Margaret Crawford. What a 
phenomenal woman of God. She passed away on May 6th. And her viewing will be on Tuesday, May 12th. And I want you to write this down. But also, if you go and look at our uh, Christian Love Fellowship Ministries group page, you will see these details. But she's going to be uh, viewed at Kemp, K-E-M-P, Funeral Home, at 245-85 Evergreen Road in Southfield, Michigan, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And when you get there, if you want to go and view, the funeral directors and them will give you instructions on how people can safely maneuver in, pay our respects, maneuver out. So I need you to pay attention to those details, and I want you to be patient if you decide to go, because it's important that we remain patient and we remain obedient to what they will instruct us to do. On May 16th, CLFMI family will be doing a love drive-by in honor of Mother Margaret Crawford and support of the entire Crawford family. If you plan to join us, and again, these instructions are also on the uh, Facebook uh, group page. If you plan to join us, we're going to round up together at 3 p.m. sharp. Not 301, but 3 p.m. sharp. And we're going to give instructions, and we're going to take off down to Dad, Mom's home. And we're going to do a drive-by. And we're going to just celebrate the life of Mother Margaret Crawford, who is a phenomenal woman of God, who we have just temporarily lost for the time being because we're going to see her again. Again, I want you to look at those directions on our Facebook page, our group page, and we will have those directions. Also, please keep Mother Hargrove Smith and family in your prayers in the passing of her son-in-law. And, and lastly, our beloved senior, senior pastor uh, who, who pastored this church along with her husband for years, who is now retired. She lost her aunt in Chicago. Reach out to Pastor Robert Hill. Send her some love. Pastor Mark, Mom, we love you. And we're praying for you, and we're here to support you. You are a phenomenal woman of God, and we appreciate you and all that you've done and all that you continue to do. Please go to our Facebook page, I mean, our yeah, Facebook page, as well as, I believe it's on our uh, website, and just look at the prayer request that we have. And continue to pray for not only those on that list, but pray for those all around this world. So much stuff is going on. But let me say this. God is in full control. Facebook family, Christian love family, family from everywhere, we thank you for joining us today. And I pray that you moms out there have the best Mother's Day ever. In fact, you guys and men and husbands and brothers and children and everyone else, I want you to reach deep in your pocketbooks and I want you to buy the best meal, provide the best family fun via Zoom. Now remember, social connecting is what we do, but physical distancing is what we're called not to do at this point. So don't go over people's houses. Don't get careless and reckless in doing that. I know it's Mother's Day. I haven't seen my mom since September 28th of 2019, but I talked to her. Yes, it hurts, it stings, but guess what? We have to do it to keep one another safe. Stay home, get on your phone or computer and wish mom and wish those your loved ones who you love a happy, Mother's Day. Peace, and I'll see you next Sunday. Amen.